Hi, it's Nick from the Run Testers, and in this video, we're comparing the Hoka Mac 4 and the Hoka Mac Supersonic. So the Hoka Mac 4 was obviously the latest version of the Mac shoe that came out last year and then the Mac Supersonic is a limited edition uh, that enters the line this year that's designed to kind of maybe be a slightly poppier, speedier version of the Mac. The Mac 4 is a cheaper shoe, it's £125 in the UK or $130 in the US, whereas the Supersonic is £140 or $150. Interestingly, the Supersonic is a slightly heavier shoe as well. It weighs 247 grams or 8.7 ounces, whereas the Mac 4 is 236 grams or 8.3 ounces. That's in uh, my UK size. 9 and then they both have a 5 millimeter drop from heel to toe. So uh, the Mac 4 has kind of standard engineered mesh from Hocker, uh, it's very comfortable, uh, it's got a good fit, it's maybe a little bit tight around the toe box but that works for me with a narrow foot and then it has insanely long laces that I've never understood in all the time I've been using this shoe. There's a bit of kind of extra comfort around the heel but the actual tongue itself doesn't have much cushioning on it which is actually again a bit surprising in that the Max Supersonic does have a bit more kind of cushioning on the tongue and a bit more and you know plenty around the heel as well. I say surprising because you know this is designed to be the slightly speedier version of the Mac I guess. Then the midsole is a Profly midsole from Hocker, which means you've got a dual density, you've got the slightly softer layer on top, and then the firmer layer beneath. So this is a kind of a rubberized uh, EVA beneath, and then a kind of softer co EVA compound on top, the idea being that you land with a nice soft cushioned landing, press through to the firmer layer and get a nice bounce back responsive feel uh, as you run. There's also a meta rocker in there, a kind of standard hocker meta rocker and the swallow tail on the back. And then the outsole is kind of rubberized foam rather than a full rubber outsole, which creates a very nice ride feel, but obviously does impact on durability. You can see certain key areas on this outsole I've worn through a fair bit in, I think about 150 kilometers worth of use. Uh, then on it comes to the Mac Supersonic, like I say, you've got that kind of slight plush, you know, cushioning around the heel and collar. And then you've still got a engineered jacquard mesh upper it feels a bit kind of thicker and stiffer than the mesh on the mac 4 but holds the foot you know equally well i think again it's slightly narrow around the front but works very well for me and then it has uh, completely normal length laces which is great news and it has a big old pull tab on the back to make it a, a bit easier to pull on now the midsole like i say is where the key kind of differences are between the two shoes now with the mac supersonic you've got a Proflight x midsole which um basically still means it's two layers and, the, and the, the thinking is very similar you've got kind of a softer layer on top and a firmer layer beneath but they've tweaked the kind of form formulations of the EVA foams used, designed to create a slightly firmer, more responsive ride to make it work better as a kind of speed focused trainer, whereas the Mac 4 is a bit kind of softer, cushier, designed I guess more for kind of general running. The outsole is still rubberized foam though, so you are going to have the same kind of durability issues. Like I will say like the wear pattern does wear off very quickly on the front of the toe off, but I don't think that's a necessarily a, a clear indication that the shoe is wearing down that quickly. You know, you just lose a bit of that pattern straight away and then it does hold up a bit better after that. But yeah, these aren't going to be the most long lasting shoes in the world. Uh, so the fit for me was the same in both these shoes, which was, I'd say I was perfectly happy, true to size. I have a pretty narrow foot. As you can see, I've had, I've had to pull the laces quite tight on the Mac 4 after extended use to kind of make sure I got a good firm midfoot hold. But yeah, it's a nice amount of room in the toe box and I found that the shoes held my foot very securely in place on all kinds of runs. So into the run test, I started with the Mac 4 because it's the shoe I had first. Um, I had this last year and I was a really big fan of it. Um, I think it's got a really lovely balance of cushioning and response in the shoe. It's a very, it is a very soft and comfortable and plush ride, but the way the kind of midsole, those two foams work and the rocker you get here means that it's really not hard at all to up the pace. And also it's a great shoe for holding kind of fast paces. Like I've done a 20 miler in the shoe at around 6.15 a mile pace and it, you know, it felt fantastic. It's actually a shoe I rate very highly as a, you know, as a marathon racing shoe option for those who don't want to use a plated trainer because it is comfortable but it is very light and it does have a nice blend of responsiveness and kind of cushioning. I've also done some kind of faster efforts doing kind of 3k reps um, at around marathon pace, so kind of 335 a k. Um, and it, you know it's good for that. So the only real type of run that I found that maybe the Mac 4 wasn't perfectly suited for was all out kind of speed working at fast reps down the track or really hard um, like race pace efforts are kind of like 5k or 10k race pace efforts you know during training and you know you can still do them but but maybe it wasn't quite explosive enough for that. That kind of thing, I always turn to shoes like Socony Endorphin Speed 2 or something like that. But as a general cruiser that can handle all your daily training 
and do kind of you know fast work pretty well as well as being a reasonable race option the mac 4 was you know one of my top shoes of last year and then we come to the mac supersonic so in theory this should fill in that little gap that the mac 4 maybe wasn't doing so well which is those kind of speedy hard runs uh, and i took it straight out for a hard run with my first run in the shoe got a video up on the channel for a bit more detail but yeah i went running a kind of a 10k alternating 340k and 320k pace with the idea being that 320k pace is down towards my kind of 10k half marathon pace um, and then 340k would be the kind of recovery reps and i don't have the best day like i did it in two 5ks in the end and let the recovery 340 slip a bit but um i thought the shoe was pretty good like um certainly has the same kind of similar smooth rolling sensation that you get with the mac 4 and it is a bit firmer and a bit harder but i don't necessarily think that translates to it being a bit speedier um and i think that was the kind of main problem with it like enjoy doing the session in that shoe but i don't think it was really a massive step up on how the mac 4 would have performed in that you know session and that i had long kind of warm up and cool down to and from where i ran the kind of reps on that session and you know this isn't as comfortable as the mac 4 so it wasn't a bad first impression but it did leave me a little bit wondering what necessarily was the point of the mac supersonic uh, and that unfortunately is kind of the impression that's remained with me like i've done some daily training in it working at kind of the easy and steady paces that i really loved doing in the mac 4 it does them you know perfectly well it just does them a tiny bit worse for me than the mac 4 uh which since this is the cheaper shoe, the lighter shoe, the uh, more easily accessible shoe makes this a little bit kind of, um, you know, pointless in my opinion. <laughs> it's, a, it's a nice enough shoe, like in a vacuum, I probably really enjoy this shoe, but it's coming in in the Mac line as a more expensive, speedier version of the Mac. And it's just not really delivering on many uh, fronts, I don't think. So I think it's quite interesting that Hocker's, you know, changing up the foams in this here and trying to tweak the version of the Mac. But uh, I don't think they've nailed it with this balance of cushioning in the Mac Supersonic. I think it's firmer, but you're not necessarily getting a huge uptick in pace and responsiveness. And you're losing a little bit of the joy of the Mac, which was that kind of soft, smooth, cushioned ride. So yeah, it comes to the verdict. This is a pretty clear one for me. Norm normally we arm and are in these quite a lot, um, but basically I think the Mac 4 is the lighter, cheaper shoe and it's the more comfortable shoe. It's the more enjoyable shoe to use for daily training and it's basically as good to use for speed work as well. So all round, the Supersonic's a little bit of a head scratcher for me. Like I do like the way that Hoka is trying to experiment with foams at the moment and trying to produce like kind of new compounds that maybe can make it a bit more competitive at times in the road running shoe market uh, because you know it's been criticized for a long time for sticking with eva um when other and basically losing ground to other brands who've got more exciting super foams out there i don't think this was the shoe to practice it on i think the mac 4 is one of the shoes that hocker really nailed uh, in terms of the foams it has on it like it's a really nice balance of softness and responsiveness that works very well i think within their lineup so and the max and the changes with the max supersonic i don't think drastically improve the shoe but Made me a little bit nervous, I suppose, about the Mac 5, that if the Mac 5 ends up being closer to the Supersonic than the Mac 4, that will be a shame, in my opinion. But I think there's some interesting stuff going on here. I think, you know, obviously, if they can make the Mac 4 that little bit speedier, as well as retaining all its other attributes, it will be a fantastic shoe to use for your kind of daily training, even with the slight question about durability because of the outsole. But yeah, that's not a problem that was solved by the Mac Supersonic. At the moment, the Mac 4 is still the clear pick of the two for me on pretty much you know, every factor, except maybe colorway, because I do really like this orange stripey thing that they've got going on the Mac Supersonic. So yeah, maybe get a Mac 4, whack a Mac Supersonic upper on it and make that the Mac 5, maybe. <laughs> So guys that's our comparison of the supersonic and the mac 4 let us know what you think in the comments what are you hoping for with the hoka mac 5 which we're hoping to see coming out some point this summer please um, let us know in the comments below like subscribe ring the little bell and we'll see you next time